Welcome back, Top Flater folks. Jeff and OG out here with you. Hey, um, on a previous video, we showed you some 90-year-old 22 ammunition that was donated by Scott up in the Bay Area. He also donated this uh, Marlin 81 uh, bolt-action rifle. So we're going to try. You guys mentioned that you wanted to see us try shooting some of that 22 ammo from 90 years ago, all caked with Cosmoline and all kinds of goo. We're going to try and shoot it through this rifle, see if it functions, see how it cycles. Uh, see if it shoots. We're going to chronograph one of them for you to see how fast they're going. And uh, overall, just see what it, what happened to uh, Remington clean bore ammo from 90 years ago. And then, of course, the ultimate test, does it actually clean our rifles for us? Well, I don't know if we'll uh, see that, but... No, of course it's not going to clean our rifles. Did you pour boiling water down the barrel of no, that before we... Not. Oh, okay. Jeff, in fact, You're, I brought these We already out. screwed it up. We already... I brought these rifles out un <laughs> unprepared. They are uh, in the exact same condition. Scott gave them to me. I should have cleaned them ahead of time. I did not. Okay. So please leave your comments. I don't think we could we'd be able to show if they, if these things actually clean the bore or, yeah. or whatever, coat hey. them with the grease or whatever. And this is something the Tau Flitter folks can actually help us with. I've got a, um, a Marlin Model 81 here. Um, we don't know much about this rifle. If you guys happen to know approximately how old this rifle is, my guess is 50s or 60s. And then we have a uh, magazine-fed Marlin over here also. We don't know much about this one other than it's got a jivey little squirrel on it. But uh, this is a Glenfield Model 20 made by Marlin. So uh, if you guys happen to geek out on this stuff and know about this, please put your comments down below. We'd like to find out something about these rifles. It's an area that I don't know much about. So. Yeah, it's, it's neat to get uh, viewers involved in researching some of this stuff. Sometimes I'll omit some, some data and then I get, you know, or I just plain forget about, you know, or didn't research it properly. But then I get a lot of information from viewers, and that's always awesome to learn. Or you measure things in cabbages, which is... Well, in Slim Jims. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is actually good to get cr uh, constructive and positive comments down below. You know, people who are just angry at this free video. I don't exactly understand why you finish watching the video and why you take the time to comment. If you're angry, just you know, watch something else. Yep. Go over to the Comedy Central page. Oh boy. They're really slow. They're all gooey heading down there. It's na aren't they nasty? <laughs> They're just you almost have to have a, a grease rag with you. You did it wrong somehow. There we go. Just hand feed it in there. Before we start, let's chronograph them and see what kind of velocity we have. There's no uh, advertised velocity on the box or anything. I'm guessing 1,100 feet per second, 1,200 maybe. 1105. Huh. That's kind of what I expected him, you know. Let's try another one for comparison. Okay. 1148. Okay. That's pretty consistent. Yeah. For 90 year old ammo. That's pretty cool. It's crazy. A lot of people are like, oh, the gun will blow up, or, you know, it's like, well, there's no, if anything, that round is not going to be more dangerous. It's going to be less dangerous after 90 years. Yeah, it's not going to turn into nitroglycerin or anything no. like that. And remember, it's, it's, they're stable. It's only starting with that much danger to begin with. And I don't know if you can show this. These little uh, copper cases are kind of cool. Yeah, they're kind of more of a, kind of a reddish copper tint to them. Yeah, they really look, folks, uh, just like a penny. They look like. No, they don't. They look. That's pennies the are, same. Pennies color. aren't that shape. Pennies aren't, you're right. Pennies aren't that shape. You have, have a tough time getting us to go into a gumball machine. Yeah. Now they're the color of a penny. Anyway, we'd like to thank the uh, the Moore Indoor Outdoor Rifle Range for letting them sh uh, shoot out here in their range. Okay, first first is an apple. We want to thank Chris for sending us that military grade body armor. That is our primary backstop. Then we got a secondary backstop behind that for double safety. Exactly. And we'd like to thank Little Red Riding Hood for providing the apple. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. I'm ready. Wow. It shot. I think you clipped it. So you did hit the apple. We hit the bottom of the apple, just grazed it. Oh, man. And Danny, Danny could have hit it. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, we, I guess it would have helped if you would have take some practice shots or something but yeah, hey we, nobody's ever going to be happy no uh, okay i can shoot all day long on a police range but uh 
you come out here and you get on camera nobody can shoot <laughs> so there's a little slug that we just dug out of the oh look uh, at that okay let me let me have that and i'll get a close-up of that so cause... 90 years that thing's been waiting to go to work sir that's just about like the rolling stones some 90 year old lead not really greasy or anything must have no. cleaned the cleaned the bore out you know <laughs> <laughs> okay hey, obviously uh we're gonna have to walk this thing in and figure out where the point of impact is in this camera shot i wanted to see if all that cosmoline like material on the tip of the bullet would uh, show up on camera and we really didn't see it it was actually a pretty clean shot 12 yards 15 yards about, uh, about 15 yards okay now he's shooting at a soda a minute ago we uh calibrated these to a low left drop there's no way to adjust this rifle so we got to hold high right and hope for the best. Yeah, there. when we shot the apple, we saw that the point of impact was way, way off. Here comes the jets. That's something deep. That's not like the SR-71 flying that's something over. deep, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm ready. Here we go. Top right corner, hopefully. Perfect. Perfect. Greg was pretty quick at about figuring out where he needed to point the rifle in order to get that impact in that exact spot. Almost a perfectly centered shot. Properly test 90 year old ammo, you gotta have 90 year old targets, right? So we brought this 90 year old Diet Shasta Cola. It was expired. <laughs> and uh, you can see that it hit pretty much dead center right there. It was a perfect shot. So, and that's funny because I was aiming really high up here on the right corner. Um, here's something we don't normally see though with any kind of a rounds rifle or pistol the round evidently was traveling slow enough that It folded the aluminum over you can see that instead I've, of, I've never even looked for something like that yeah, instead <laughs> of, Normally it punches through pretty clean. Yeah. Hole. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of folded in almost like a slow moving round Okay, like sometimes if you shoot nine millimeter hardball at a target, it'll fold the uh, target in okay It's just cutting out a nice little hole. Oh, so. I'm not I don't know if that's an indicator of a slow moving round or, or what, but. Yeah, it's 1100 feet per second. Yeah. Look what's inside the can though. This is what's really interesting. <laughs> Who knew that that was in there for 90 years? Shaving cream. Here we go. Whoa. Wow, that was neat. Yet another really well placed shot right in the center of the can. I think it hit the letter A. And what this shows us is, well, Greg's a really good shot, but it also shows us that the ammunition being 90 years old is still a very accurate round. Even though the ammunition was made in the Depression era, the level of standards for quality are definitely there. Probably uh, higher standards than some ammunition manufactured today. It's even by the same company, believe it or not. Okay, we got a, an old broken, what is, it, what is that called, a cell phone? Yeah, it's a cellular phone. It's not broken though, I just made a call on it when I was down there. Oh, okay, Who, who'd you call? I called Mrs. OG, but she didn't answer as usual. <laughs> so Ted, sorry, but we're gonna shoot your phone, buddy. Yeah, I just got those in the mail the other day, so thank you, Ted. So if Ted sent you a phone, is it a Ted talk? I don't. No. Oh, God. Get back to shooting. Yeah. I'll see, I'll see myself out. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> okay, 90 tech, 90 year old technology versus uh, 2008 technology or whatever that is. A Motorola, some sort. Is that nine year? Yeah, it's a Motorola. Do you know I don't have a cell phone? Um, hey, tell Flater folks, this is true. Jeff is the only human being on Earth outside of Central Africa that does not own a cell phone. That's true. <laughs> That's how hold, poor I am. That's, you need to get a hold of Jeff a block away. You got to email him. You, you do. <laughs> or send a Pony Express. Or shoot a shotgun in the air to get my attention. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. We had a few viewers who really didn't want us to shoot this 90 year old ammo. They thought it belonged in a museum or something like that. But we thought that. It would be more important for just history to show that this 90-year-old ammo still functions very well and share it with the world here and get an even broader reach than a museum can. 
Well, almost made it through. This is, of course, just the auto box case. Here is the Motorola. It wanted to make it through that battery, but couldn't quite wow. pull it through. Wow. Remember, that's a 90-year-old bullet hitting a 9-year-old phone. There's the bullet. Pretty crazy. I, I think, yeah. Oh, look at that. Just wrecked that bullet. You can see the data plan right in there. <laughs> All the apps and everything yeah, came can, out. Right, the apps are falling out. <laughs> so, What's pretty, an app? <laughs> what's an app? Well, Sometimes I feel like I've been transported into the future from like the 1940s or Jeff, something. Jeff, it's like a magazine, but printed in the... Incidentally, the uh, hmm. We know that a bolt-action rifle will fire these old 90-year-old rounds, right? The bolt-action rifle would fire a piece of gravel. However, we have a modern Walther P22 pistol. We're going to load a few of these uh, sticky, gooey things into the magazine, and we're going to see if it will function in semi-auto. Who knows? Put, put like folks. three of them in there. We're, we're, we're Remember, semi-auto, not auto. This is not an auto pistol. <laughs> Unless you're a politician. <laughs> Shh. Right. Demonetize. No, politician is just a word. It's okay. a bad word. It's a bad word. You'll have to filter it. But yeah. Let's give that a try, semi-auto, and see if that Okay. Works. Don't move. <laughs> 30 minutes later. Okay. Uh, what are you going to do? A five-round function rapid-fire test? We're going to hope. Hope. It's 90 year old rounds and I'm asking them to react pretty quick. Okay, I'm ready. I guess that was four. Four, okay. But four of them worked. Yeah, and it cycled. And it cycled, every one of them. To sum it up, every single round that we shot, both on camera and off camera, we shot a couple off camera, uh, all function perfectly. It, they definitely don't make things like they used to. Now at this point, I don't know if YouTube will even monetize this video. They've been slamming us extra hard because we're on that self-certification program. We click, yeah, there's firearms in the video, and they demonetize it right away. So we want to thank everyone who is helping to support this channel and being our life preserver. We'll see you next time.